students. So my first move is I have students turn in at least their name and their email address via a Google form and then I have that data in a spreadsheet. Sometimes I'll ask them to self-assess against a rubric so I have that initial data or I'll ask them just for different information like the link to their assignment or different things. Um, I've actually made here some fake data. All of these are not real names um, or anybody's scores and so what I had is I had a list of first last names and email addresses and then I added these other columns like gradebook grade and then I'm evaluating their assignment on their readings, their notes, and their reflection. And I'm grading them each on a three-point scale of one to three. So this first person, I might give them a three, a three, and a three, and the next person a three, a two, and a one. Um, and I would put these in manually, how I would do this, although I tend to want to just default. If I know that most people are going to get it right, I'll just default everybody full credit. So in this case, this person, um, we get threes all the way across. I highlight them. And then you'll notice that there's a little um, square in the corner that I can then pull down and I, if I drag it, it'll copy and paste. So I'm going to copy and paste that all the way down the sheet. So by default, I'm going to give everybody full credit. Um, and so then I like to be able to give them a little bit of feedback, individual feedback. Um, studies show that uh, saying things more than just good job but giving them specific and immediate feedback really increases student motivation. So doing it this way helps me to get it as immediate as I can. Um, obviously I still have to self-evaluate you know, evaluate myself, um, but it is something that I can do. And then over here in the rubric, um, I'm going to write a formula because I actually don't want to give them a 3. A common mistake is um, if it's a 3 point rubric and you get a 2 out of 3, um, that you would kind of like say two thirds, well that's a 66% and I don't really mean um, a two out of three to be um, a D. I usually think of it being excellent, average, poor, and then unacceptable with a zero. So I really more think of that as A, a C for average, and then I'll do a D for, or 50% uh, or for a one depending on, on how I expect that, and then a zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use uh, a nested if function. So I'm going to say this equals if, parenthesis, so if E2 equals 3, comma, I'm going to give them a 70, excuse me, a 100. If it's a 3, I'm going to give them a 100, comma, but if E2 equals a 2, then I actually want to give them a 70. So if they have a 3, it's 100%. If it's a 2, they get a 70. Comma, if E2 equals 1, then I would probably give them um, a 60 or maybe a 50, depending on, on how I am feeling that particular day. Um, well, actually, against the rubric that I wrote. And then otherwise, if it's not 3, 2, or 1, if I were to be able to give them a 0, then otherwise give them a zero. So parentheses, 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 so they all match. So because that was a three, you'll notice that the score is 100. When I change this to a two, it's a 70. And if I change it to a one, it's a 60. Change it to a zero, it's a zero. So then automatically I'm able to grade against the rubric three, two, one, or zero, but it's actually able to translate that into the actual percentages that I wanted to. I'm going to click on that one cell and you'll notice that the little box shows up in the corner. I'm going to drag to the right and it's going to copy the formula. So you notice when I double click here that this one is in column F where this one was in column E. So you can see that E and F are being highlighted separately. This one of course is in column G. So it actually takes the pattern. I went one to the right so it moved the pattern of what it was evaluating one to the right. I'm then going to highlight those three I'm going to grab the corner. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to pull it all the way down so that it copies that formula all the way down. So on anybody, if I change their grades, you'll notice that, well, the score, uh, the gradebook score on the left is changing because I already wrote that formula. I'll show you what that formula is. But you'll notice that over here, I'll change this to 0, 0, 2. And you notice that it's now 0, 0, 70 over there where it's on the rubric evaluation. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you the gradebook score. So I will start this over again because I actually have it set at the readings are 25%, the notes are 50%, and the reflection is 25%. So, oops. 
me go back to that page. So I'm going to change this. I can actually write it. So when I write a formula, it always starts with an equal sign. And I'm going to say this equals, now I don't want this reading score of 3. What I really want is this rubric score of 100. So I'm going to click on the 100, and that is 25% of the grade. So I'm going to put a 0 0.25. So 25% of the 100 is the readings grade, plus... If I take the notes grade, which is over there in column J, right? So I'm not doing columns E, F, and G. Those are the rubric scores. I want the actual grade scores that I put over here in columns I, J, and K. So in J, times 0 0.50, because it's 50% of the grade, plus K2, which is the reflection, times 0. 0.25. So the readings are 25%, the notes are 50%, and the reflection is 25%. And so I would just calculate that formula that would automatically calculate the grade. And so I'm able to automatically get a column that's going to total each student's grade right there. So I'll just make this oh, 2, 1, 0. Now make sure you don't like say, oh, this is so X, I'm going to give a 4, which is totally off my rubric scale. It's not even on there. It's going to give them actually a 0 because I said if it's not 1, 2, or 3 to give them a 0. So do be kind of aware of that. You do need to stay on your rubric. Um, okay, so once I do that and I go through and I give them all notes, this is fabulous. I love how you used glitter and talked about the president. So really, I would encourage you to do more than just good job. It really say something specific about what they did well or if they needed improvements. Specifically, tell them what they need to improve on. Um, you did not use proper grammar. Um, and you just go kind of down through the list and, and do that. Now, in order to give them the individual feedback, I actually need to, I'm going to go insert, and I'm going to do script. And the script that I'm going to insert this time is called Valmerge, Yale, M-E-R-G-E. -E. So I'm going to search for Valmerge. I'm going to go ahead and install it. Takes a little bit of time sometimes. Okay, and then I will authorize it. Just ignore the red screen of death. Um, authorize it again, so hit close. And so now that it's installed, I'm going to hit close. You would actually need to hit this help page because what you do need is to get their sample data sheet, but I already have that. So I'm going to hit close. So over here on this tab, I had copy and pasted the sample sheet, and um, I would say here instead of from your teacher, the, the name, I'd actually write my name. So my name is, oops, my name is Alice Keeler, and then it says my subject template um, is the subject line. So this is your, actually you can actually put merge tags in here, so I'm going to put first in brackets, so a left bracket and a right bracket, so that the subject, the email subject to the person actually has their name in it. This is your feedback for this assignment. Of course I'd be more specific. Um, I have, it, the email column is titled email. That's what it is in the sheet itself. So if you come back over here, you'll notice I have a column called email. Um, I actually have the data. It's in this data tab. So I'm going to change it from rubric to data. And then I have, it's not a test. I'm not using HTML, but I am using rich text, which you'll notice that this um, is lime green and this is big and bold. So the rich text will actually send it that way, so it'll kind of match. And then I actually have your query where send equals yes. So if I go back and I look at this data tab, you'll notice I created a send column. Um, sometimes I have a lot of students and I just send it as I do it. So um, I'm actually going to write a formula for that too, but I would have to have a yes, a Y in each of these, so it's only going to send the ones that have a Y. So if I sent it right now, nothing would go out. And then this is my message. So it's hello, bracket, first, bracket, and bracket, space bar, bracket, last, bracket. And so it will actually say 
hello Joe Smith or whoever your student is it will personalize it and then I have here uh, bracket grade book grade your what's in the brackets has to match exactly what's in your headers so you'll notice that my header here where the grade book grade is actually called grade book space grade so that it'll match exactly and all this information has to be on one sheet I can't be jumping around on different sheets and then I can put in here anything I want so a lot of times I'll just give some generic feedback and use it kinda like a newsletter these are common mistakes here's some things that are coming up that you want to do but notice I leave um, some cells blank in between because it'll separate the paragraphs I then have my rubric scores are 3, 2, 1, or 0 and so I have readings colon and then I put the column header of readings in between brackets because it's going to merge each person's individual rubric score. Now when I say rubric score, I'm actually giving them the 3, 2, 1, or 0 from columns E, F, and G. I'm not giving them the percent score from columns I, J, and K. So um, notice I named them differently. It's really important that none of your headers have the same header name. Um, and then I'm giving them feedback, I'm giving them their individual notes. So you do have to have this page, um, with the, it's a separate tab with this information to let the script know that what you're going to send. Um, and then you'll notice that up at the top it now says Valmerge. So after I inserted the Valmerge script, this little Valmerge option shows up. So I'm going to go back here to the data because I want to only send, I only graded two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and write a formula to tell me whether or not I should send these um, emails. So I'm going to say equals if, I'm going to go over here to the note. So if the note, H2, equals nothing. That's so I put in blank quotation. Just left quotation, right quotation. Equals nothing, comma, do nothing. So I just, those. Otherwise, put a yes and your yes has to be in quotation so I'm going to put that Y with an ending parenthesis and so you'll notice that this has a Y because it has stuff in it and as I take the corner and drag it down the page most of them are blank so as I leave a comment for this person um, your reflection is too short and then the Y send shows up so let me do this one again you do not have a reflection. This is 25% of your grade. Then you'll notice the Y shows up for that person. Um, so then once I'm ready to send, like I did a bunch of them, now I'm going to go have dinner or something. I'll go Val Merge, and it says Mail Merge. So I go ahead and I click Mail Merge. And it says the template sheet name. And that's the sheet that has um, the information telling Valmerge what to do and I always name that tab mail you can name them whatever you want obviously but the formulas are on the mail click OK and I gotta kinda wait a little bit let me and it's gonna look it's gonna give you one sample with all this HTML code in there so I put yes and then it is emailing the, see it sent the email to only four people okay um, you notice I have four Y's here because those are the only ones that had a send being yes. This, by the way, is the mail tab, remember, where it's telling the Valmerge what to do. Um, then what I do is I just kind of override that and I just write sent so that the next time that I go to send it doesn't resend it because I would still have a Y. So I do need to override those if I plan on running it a second time. So then I go back and I'm going to now do this person so um, you did an excellent job your use of grammar was perfect and you notice this now says a Y so if I run the Val merge again and then mail is where my information is and it's gonna run it I say yes the more you'll notice that came up a little bit quicker because the more I'm sending the longer it takes to process if you're trying to send out 200 of them expect it to take maybe 10 minutes for this box to show up and click yes and see it sent the mail to only one person so they got their individualized feedback and it didn't send it to these four because I changed it from a Y to something that was not a Y you can just delete the Y's and the formulas there but that helps me to be really efficient and get my grading done extra fast.